Hey, Drew here with Plot First, and I'm going to be reviewing the third episode of Amazing Stories, and it's called Dynaman and the Vault with triple exclamation points. I reviewed the first two episodes of this series already, and if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, I recommend subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss anything. So basically, I feel like this episode, it was interesting. I feel like a lot of people will like it because I think it's on a topic that people are really interested in right now. I think that a lot of people really, really like superhero stories and we'll go see superhero stories even if they're kind of the same thing we've seen before and i think that would be my main criticism of this story is it really was just a bunch of things that we've seen before and it really wasn't anything new and it was done on a tv budget so there just wasn't really a whole lot of reason to watch it it's interesting because when amazing stories first showed up i really wasn't sure what kind of show it was going to be i feel like i've been thinking that Apple Plus was kind of like a premium subscription service, but I'm starting to feel like it's more like Netflix where you get tons of content, but who knows what you're going to get. Like anytime you reach in, it could be a good show or it could be a bad show. And to me, this is not a bad show per se, but it just feels like something I could watch on network television. It's like, why am I paying extra money for these shows, which I could watch on ABC or on NBC, it doesn't feel worth extra money to me for this particular show. But, you know, a lot of people aren't paying for Apple Plus. We're just doing, getting a Apple TV or a new iPhone or whatever and getting the free year. And for that, you know, I'll watch it, but I don't think I would pay for, to watch this show. Even five bucks a month, I don't think it's worth that. I think that this episode works primarily because of the performance of Robert Forster. And the story is basically that he is this older man who is in the get off my lawn phase of his life. And he's not willing to admit it. And he kind of has a troubled relationship with his son. And he goes to live with his son and his son's wife and their two children, two boys. And at first you think that the grandpa doesn't like the young grandson because the grandson is into comics and stuff. But eventually you realize that the granddad was actually into comics when he was a kid and tried to get his own son into comics. And lo and behold, in the mail, they get a mysterious envelope and it contains a ring, which gave a character in the comics the grandpa used to read power. So the grandpa puts it on and lo and behold, he goes from being a very, very frail and you know, struggling to move about old man to being someone with superpowers. But as I said, I mean, I just felt like this episode really didn't do anything with the superpowers that we haven't seen, even in very, very mainstream stuff. Like to me, if you're gonna do a small screen superhero story, you have to be more cerebral because you just don't have the budget to accomplish the things you would see in a movie. And here, I just really didn't think the story had a theme. I think that I'm a sucker for father-son reconciliation stories, and that's kind of what this was, but I don't really feel like the story ever really tugged on my heartstrings that much, or it really convinced me that the relationship between the father and the son and the father and the, or, and the grandfather and the grandson, I never felt like those relationships were really in that big of a dilemma and I never really felt that concerned. Um, I liked this episode, but I liked it primarily for Robert Forster, who of course tragically, well not tragically, I mean he's he was pretty old, but he died of cancer I believe last October. And like many people, I was introduced to him and Jackie Brown and I was just, you know, really, really impressed with his performance. He's a character actor and he's one of those people, I don't think many people know him by name, but you see his face and you're like, where have I seen that guy? You know, he's one of that guy actors, as they call them. But he's really good, and I think that an actor like him really goes to show what is missing in a lot of TV shows, because I think an actor like him goes just so far to elevating the material that this episode, if you had any other actor in this role, would probably be pretty boring and I would probably give it just like terrible review but he actually manages to salvage it somewhat but I still just didn't think there was that much to this episode 
The show so far, I've still been struggling to figure out like what is the through line for this show? What is the main reason that all these stories kind of, what is the template that they're all following? And the only thing I can come up with so far is that people are going about their lives and then something unusual happens. But I'm getting a little tired of the fact that they never explain the unusual things. Like it just kind of happens to them and the characters are just kind of pulled along by it, but it's not ever the result of something that they did where you can say this happened because the character was foolhardy, and it's not like you can say that it actually caused them to confront some flaw in themselves. So it's just not great storytelling, quite honestly. But I'm going to keep watching because, you know, I've watched these first few episodes, and hopefully the last, I think there's two episodes left, hopefully those are better, so I'm going to review those as they come out. If you're interested in seeing those reviews and more videos like this one, please subscribe to the channel. That's my review of Amazing Stories, Episode 3.